we will come back with testimonies and testimonials. In Jesus' name we pray. Please be seated. I'm so glad um, to be here. And um, we are. I promised my brother that I will not make you laugh today. But you have already laughed. I don't know whether I laugh in my sleep. I'm going to share with you in the Bible, we have personalities God the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. That's P number one. We have the patriarchs Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. We have practices circumcision, marriages, tithes, offerings. Then we have principles. Give and it shall be given unto you. Those are principles. Then we have processes. Seed time, harvest. If an unbeliever knows the processes, the principles, the practices of the Bible without knowing the personalities of the Bible, he will not make the kingdom of God. But he can do better than an ignorant Christian who does not know the principles, the practices, the processes. So I'm going to share with you today the principles of breaking social limitations. Social limitations. I have broken social limitations. There are places and people, places I've been to, people I have interacted with that I never imagined when I was younger that I could interact with. So I'm going to take a character study I'm going to take an incidence and show you how to break social limitations. Let's take our bearing from Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter, I mean, Matthew chapter 1, 5 to 6. Okay. Solomon, the father of Boaz whose mother was Rahab. Boaz, the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. Obed, the father of Jesse, and Jesse, the father of King David. So we're going to look at Ruth. If you go to my online bookshop, Petra Publications, you will see books and messages on these individuals. We are going to look at Ruth. Let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 23. Let's look at, let me go to the right place. I'll, I'll get it. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verses 3 to 6. I hope I'm right. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verses 3 to 6. Yes, I'm right. No Ammonite or Moabite or any of their descendants may enter the assembly of the Lord not even in the tenth generation. But we just read in Matthew chapter 1, 5 to 6, that Ruth became the great grandmother of David. David entered the temple and ate the showbread. He wasn't a priest. So from Ruth to David is just about four or five generations. A generation is 30 years. So 300 years was cut short. I told you yesterday that purpose supersedes the statutes of God. God can use anything and any process to fulfill his purpose. Donkeys don't talk. But when God wanted a donkey to be an evangelist, he spoke. So, when asked, how did Ruth, who was, command, who was cursed in Deuteronomy chapter 23, 3 to 6, that no descendant of a Moabite or Moabites shall enter the temple until the third, until the tenth generation. How was that law suspended? 
There's something called prerogative of mercy in law. The chief judge of the state can go to a prison and free convicted prisoners. The head of state can free convicted prisoners. Sometimes lawyers do what is called, I don't know if I'm pronouncing the word, nolle prosecute. The state knows that you are a criminal, but they don't want to judge case with you. And if the state is not ready to judge case with you, then you are free. So, and that's the word mercy. Mercy is from the Hebrew word hesed. Bet hesda. Hesed means that when God finishes with you, it's as if what happened to you never happened. So, one of the things you must know is that with the presence of God, there is liberty. What is liberty? If you take CaCO3, that's calcium carbonate. I don't know the IU pack name now. Ca calcium carbonate, CaCO3. Then add 2 HCl hydrochloric acid. You will get CaCl2 calcium chloride plus H2O plus CO2. Inside that solid material, there was no gap. You laugh? I go to school. <laughs> and no book. Inside that solid material, carbon dioxide that was trapped is liberated by the presence of hydrochloric acid. And you cannot bring it back into it. Water is also liberated. So, in the presence of God, there is liberty. That means the person trapped in you that has not manifested is made manifest. In the termite colony, you have the workers, the soldiers who are blind, they don't go out. Then you have the king and the queen that lay the eggs. Then you have the long-winged reproductives. Those ones we put a bucket of water under electric lamp and then they fall inside and we eat them all over Africa. Those two long-winged reproductives, they don't do anything inside the termite colony. If you go along the grita to, you are going to Elele Alimini, you will see that between the electric poles and electric lights, you have termite colonies in between. That's because when the letter rain falls, those long winged reproductives that were virtually useless, they fly out. When they fly out of the termite colony, there is a divine metamorphosis that takes place. One of them turns to a male, one turns to a, a female, one turns to a king, one turns to a queen. And so you will see two of them going two by two, if you have noticed. And anywhere they go to, they will establish the termite colony. They were useless. They were not kings. They were not queens when they were in the termite colony. But with that trigger, that stimulus that comes, they are liberated socially from where they were as non-entities to become known entities. As the choir was singing, I said, thank God for a predominantly young church. To establish branches in Canada will not be difficult. Because I will see you in Quebec. I will see you in Ottawa. To establish branches in Australia will not be difficult. I will see you in Melbourne. I will see you in Adelaide. I will see you in Sydney. You will invite me as your guest speaker, don't worry. I will also see you in London. Do you believe what I'm saying? Tell somebody in Amid and they talk so. Tell the person, say, I know resemble waiting, then they talk. I am not limited by your imagination. I will become that person. Ruth chapter 1. I will share with you some key principles. Ruth chapter 1 to verse 5. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. So a man from Bethlehem in Judah, together with his wife and two sons, went to live a while in the land of Moab. The man's name was Elimelech. His wife's name was Naomi. 
The names of the two sons of his two sons were Malon and Kilion. They were Ephratites from Bethlehem, Judah. And they went to Moab and lived there. Now Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died. And she left her with her two sons. They married Moabite women, one named Opa and the other Ruth. After they had lived there about ten years, both Malon and Kilion also died. And Naomi was left with her two sons, without her two sons and her husband. Look up, please. The level of your limitless is determined by your obedience to the word of God. Say, my hands are not short, neither my ears deaf. He said, but your sins. You see, in the reign, in the time of the judges, every man did whatever he wanted to do. Just like modern day Pentecostalism. Modern day Pentecostalism is like a tale told by an idiot. Full of sound and fury signifying nothing. There's so much excitement, so much fashion and little passion to follow God. The degree to which you conform to God's purpose determines the degree to which you are delimited. If I take this microphone to become a yam pounder, I will limit the functionality of this microphone and I will destroy it and destroy the yam. So, anytime you go out of God's purpose, there is a struggle. If I had remained in Abba practicing medicine, I wouldn't be where I am today. Yesterday, as as I'm speaking now, this message is also being shared in Europe. It's being relayed in Romania. As I finished preaching yesterday, 1,900 people had seen it. I did a post during NSAS in the rain, the way the oligarchy fight. Some of you will have seen it. I wore a raincoat, dark raincoat. I was in the rain. Close to half a million people saw it in only one platform. I would not see half a million patients if I was practicing medicine. Being a doctor was a big deal for many. But when it came to the fulfillment of my purpose, it was like cow dung. So sometimes, if you plant a palm tree inside a bucket, it will turn to flower. It either destroys the bucket or destroys itself. When you locate your life and your energies in the wrong place, you might not get the kind of results you are supposed to get. So, all things work together for good for them that love God, who are called according to his purpose. You will ask yourself, what I am doing now, is it according to God's purpose for me? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and every other thing shall be added unto you. It's not escapism to heaven, because nothing shall be added to you in heaven. You don't need anything. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and every other thing shall be added it's a passionate desire to make a prayer request thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. That is bring a little heaven. Bring the tangibility of heaven down to humanity. Anointing is not quaking. Anointing is not uh, mm. Anointing is not robo scatter shake the wear sandal. Anointing is not send down the courier send down the courier. Anointing is not wearing a face like a mortuary attendant. Anointing is the bringing the tangibility of divinity to humanity so that man can feel the tangibility of divinity. It is becoming a step-down transformer of the nature of God. Because you are created in the image and likeness of God and God is limitless. As long as you are functioning in the direction of God and he commissions you, he co commissions you. That is, he commissions you. When he commissions you, his presence follows you. And then you cannot be limited by witches, wizards, or poverty. Am I talking to somebody? Else? So the greatest thing here is not for us to become rich. I'm a rich man. Wealth will irritate you when you reach some of the levels some of us have seen. They brought food here. Who is cooking the food? Who is cooking the food? Who is the head of the Department of Stomach Sciences? God bless you richly. Bless you bless you. I will take some home. I will take some. God bless you. You know, I don't fast nowadays. I have fasted all the fasting I wanted to fast. A righteous man leaves an inheritance for his children's children, including some few demons for you to practice with. 
If I cast out all the demons, what will you practice with? <laughs> we will not laugh today. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody here? I, you're good food. I eat well. One day I went to Ghana to preach. And they were give, you know, when I travel overseas, I carry Gary and Egusi. Because if I don't swallow, I don't behave well. How can I be? How can I be eating pizza? Pizza that looks like gum that they put tomatoes. Or be eating cheese, cheese that looks like soap. I must swallow. <laughs> Mary man, man. I went to Ghana to preach. They were giving me salad and all. That was a preaching well. So I asked them, do you have fufu in this land? They say yes. So they gave me fufu and cracker soup with bush meat. I dealt with the thing. That day I preached very well and I told them that fufu plus Holy Ghost leads to fulfillment. We will, we, we will not laugh today. We will not laugh today. Okay, that was a commercial break. That was a commercial break. To wake somebody up who was sleeping. Ruth chapter 1 verse 6. We are taking a long journey. When Naomi heard in Moab that the Lord had come to the aid of his people by providing food for them, she and her daughters-in-law prepared to return home, return home from there. Bethlehem means house of bread. And there was temporarily a limitation in the supply of bread. But God heard their cries and came back, brought food. Now Naomi was wrongly located in Moab. And she heard. Somebody say information. Say it again. Say it again. You are limited by your level of information. I was looking for a flash drive inside my box. I remember I put it inside the box. And I couldn't get it. So I called the young man that brought the, uh, gave me the flash drive. He said, if you see any card that looks like MTN card, that that is the stuff. I had opened the place. I had seen the thing, but I did not identify it. So when he gave me information, I now got what I was looking for. My limitation was broken. Now listen. There's hardly any pastor in Ugili, even in Delta State, that will intimidate me with landed property, including winners and redeem. I have as much land as they have. Information. One rich man told me, say, my son, if you want to be rich, buy land early. Unbeliever. So I was trekking, I was buying land. But how did I start buying land from? I heard that he was selling land. And I went to meet him. And I bought part of his factory. Information. Get relevant information on a daily basis. I told you I don't watch television. I study television. I scavenge for knowledge. I scavenge for information. What is the difference between information and knowledge. Information is bringing to your notice what is happening or has happened. Knowledge is the ability to apply it to get a set objective. So when Naomi heard, she could have stayed. Like as many of you will hear now, if you don't act on it, it's just information. Every word I'm going to say here is capable of changing your destiny if you act on it. So she prepared without preparation you will be limited because preparation that meets opportunity will delimit you Ronaldo started playing football from the age of 10 I went to do masters at Abraka Delta State University at the age of 56 after studying medicine because when I give lectures people will go and check my my profile and see that I have only MBBS and most times they don't want to pay attention so I said I am going to study what they have studied I never knew that the social sciences are more difficult than medicine 
Medicine is very simple. Two eyes remain two eyes. Retina remains retina. Sartorius remains sartorius. The number of bones remains the number of bones. The number of teeth remains. Pregnancy remains pregnancy. You can calculate the EDD. You see, it's simple. It's just voluminous. It's apprenticeship. That's why quacks can practice medicine. But these, these, these uh, social scientists, they decrease. <laughs> you want to define politics. You can't define it with one sentence. Half mv squared is equal to kinetic energy. Simple. Gay-Lussac's law of gaseous volume states that when gases react, they do so in small volumes that bear simple ratios to one another until they are product in gaseous. Simple. The capital of Malaysia is still Kuala Lumpur. Simple. These people want to define only politics, which I can define easily. Politics is when thieves pretend as if they want to help you. <laughs> but they have their own interest at heart. They will tell you, according to David Easton, politics is authoritative allocation uh, of resources. Eh? Before I finish knowing that one, they say politics, according to Harris Laswell, is who gets what, when, and how much. What is it? And I don't have a good memory. So what do I do? I will sit down, prepare for the exams, read that thing 11 times, 10 times, 12 times. There was one day I came to preach at St. Matthew's, Rome of Yokan, the Anglican Church. I went to school. I was preaching, marrying my wife, doing businesses, building houses, and going to school. I don't drive long distance. I came with public transport, preached in Rumo Biokani, left Rumo Biokani around 7.30, got home around 11. I read till 2. Then went to school to do microeconomics. And I scored 85. Listen, I received, I received. Without preparation and planning, you will receive air. People ask me, how come, somebody asked me, um, non nary hand you take the preach, which Bible school did you attend? No. There's no mystery to it. I will take this passage, I will read it in up to eight Bibles. My Sunday school class will get filled, they will divide it and bring another, it will get filled again. Because I read my Sunday school manual five times before Sunday morning. Nigerians think that they can win uh, trophies, win this thing without preparation. There was one time we went to play football with track suit that they caught. We forgot Jesse. Even to be an arm robber is not an easy task. You need to know how to run. You need to know how to do weightlifting. You need to know how to carry weight and jump. Jump fence with color television is not an easy thing. <laughs> so if you think that we have, we have come here for limitless, then you just limitless. No be so. They will call us 419 pastors. We must teach you the reality of life. Every greatness you see has a period of preparation and planning. Preparation and planning. Sometimes, rats can deliver within 21 days. Pigs can deliver three, as it six weeks, six, uh, six months, no, three, mo three months, three weeks, and three days. Pigs will deliver. But an elephant gets pregnant for 22 months. An elephant pregnancy is two years. Professional courses. Before you become a medical doctor, you will do six years. They will send you to several places for postings. To go and do rural posting, do all that. Then you do your final exams. Then you must do internship. After internship, then you do youth service. You do youth service, you do residency for years before you become a consultant. Maize does not take long to grow. But coconut takes long before it bears fruit. We, can, we didn't come here to make you hurry into greatness you will fail. We came here to teach you that you need to prepare. You don't know how to cook now. You will fail in marriage. There's no prayer that will help you. 
You cannot take care of one room as a girl. Your brazier is on top of fan. Your pant is on top of fridge. You cannot take care of a flat when you get married. You cannot get to work by 7.30 when you are single. When you marry and you have children, you will get late. Preparation matters. Then planning. Planning is a mental preparation for the future. It's close to prophecy. Planning. So she prepared to leave Moab. There are some things you will hear as I speak. Don't rush into them. Take time. Plan. So, then Naomi said to her two daughters in law, Go back, each of you, verse 8, to your mother's home. May the Lord show you kindness as you have shown kindness to your dead husbands. Blah, 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 blah. Then let's come to verse 16, verse 15. Okay, let me start from verse 14. At this, they wept aloud again. Then Upper kissed her mother-in-law goodbye. But Ruth clung to her. Look, said Naomi, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and her gods. Small letter. Go back with her. But Ruth replied, don't urge me to leave you or, return, or turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people. And your God, my God, she got born again at this point. And at this point, the law against her was suspended. Then the Bible says, uh, Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if even death separates you and me. Verse 18, very important. When Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped urging her. Another thing you need to break limitations, social limitations, is determination. Determination. The Bible says cowards will not inherit the kingdom of God. When I, when I told, when my father told me I was going to become a medical doctor in primary four, my mother said, is this, is this, is this, this kind of person that will train you to become a doctor? <laughs> my elder brother said that all those who went to read medicine from my community, the town I was born, failed. I told him, if two people will graduate, I will be one of them. You must be determined. Listen to me. I didn't have books to read in medical school. When people read till 12, I would borrow their books and read till morning. I didn't have money to go for convocation. The buyer I used to do my final year exam, somebody dashed me. The coat, I borrowed it. There was a day we had surgery, viva, oral exams, practicals. And Dr. Feluduna is in Lagos. I didn't have the book on plastic surgery. I went to his room and he said I must not take the book away from his room. And he was going to sleep. So he was sleeping, I picked the book. As I, and I had not slept for three days. As I picked the book, because I could not go back to the mud house having failed in medical school. I opened the book, chapter 5 opened. And with slip eye, the thing fell from my hand. I picked it again. Opened it. Chapter 5 opened again. It happened about four times. I went to wash my face. Then I read chapter 5, parotid tumor. I went into the hall, the pediatric hall, and they wrapped papers for us to ballot. And I picked number six. I still remember it vividly. And I went into the, the, the ward. Chapter six was a young boy with parotid tumor. And Professor Achempong from Ghana was the one who was interviewing me. And I massacred it. Not because I was intelligent. I had insight. I, I read it. I knew it. Listen, you don't succeed casually. When you live casually, you become a casualty. Live seriously. If you're an Igbo man here, and you're a second generation Igbo man, an Igbo child here, don't be stupid. Your parents were given only 20 pounds or 10 pounds. What you're seeing in Onicha is, is determination. Determination to succeed that made them to build 
the wealth that some of you are sitting down on now. We are raising children who, will be, who, 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 who are criminally lazy. Children who can't cross road on their own. When you leave them, they do like a Greek foul. We are training house girls instead of our daughters. Abiyageli, Masi Junior, Yorunshi. Junior will just make like this. They will clean the ass of a 13 year old idiot. Abiyageli, Masi Junior, Geri. They will prepare food for Junior. Abiyageli, Abiyageli. You will train Abiyageli, you won't train Junior. You will train Abiyageli, you won't train your daughter. When your daughter marries, she will go and be cooking food with exercise book. Add two spoons of Maggie, wait for five minutes, then add melon, then stir. After cooking their goosey soup, when you are eating it, it will be running 40 kilometers per hour. We will not laugh today. When you put their goosey soup, before you know it's inside your armpit. Sometimes deliberately allow your children to pass through hardship. I was building one of my buildings. My senior son, he was in Benedio, he was forming a Javata. I said, block in between all the plants. Block, 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 block. Block them. I gave him pure water to drink. I said, do you know why I told you to do this? He said, no. I said, so that you will know the pain it took me to build this house. So that you will not sell it when I die. You see, the future you want to face, you know it, but in between the present and the future, you might not know it. Let me tell you something. Let me just share this with you. I hope the camera is is following me. Listen, they told Mary that she was going to deliver God, deliver Jesus Christ. But listen, God did not book Yuba for her. She had to trek a distance of 86 miles which was a journey of three days to Bethlehem. God did not arrange accommodation because she was carrying the Messiah. She had to look for a place. Sometimes when you carry a big dream that will free humanity and free yourself, people don't have accommodation for you. People are ready to pay hospital bills for you, contribute to your burial instead of paying your university fees. Church committees are most active when people die. Welfare committees are most active when people die. But don't care. You mean I will go to my father's town where I am a prince and I will not see a house to stay? They didn't want her and her pregnancy. Nobody wants to associate with your vision when you are struggling. And for you to break limitations, don't care. Don't listen to their insults. Let every insult they give to you give you insight. Can somebody take that child outside? Madam, madam, this is a school. Carry that child, go outside. When he stops crying, you bring her and come. I beg you. I beg her. Or I go, I can't leave you. You know, children don't cry in the shrine. I wonder. (laughs) I've been down at the same picking Papa they played with yesterday. Okay, madam, find something for her. Don't, don't hassle her. Leave her, leave her, leave her. Madam, find something for her, I beg. Okay. Are we, are we good? Okay. Check, check the pampas, whether it's wet, you know. Are they take care of children over now? So. <laughs> when Mary was in labor, the Olofofo angel did not tell her, GCK. She had to push out the baby first. Deliver your dream before people will announce you. Nobody is going to help you to push out your dream. Not only you dream up. I was the first bus driver in my school. I cleaned toilets. They were laughing at me, doctor, when they drive bus. Even recently, one woman came and called me, come. I go meet her. 
Say, go call me HM. He said, some more than two years back. Go call me HM. Now I go meet HM. HM, Madam Mitch, they call you. Now HM, make like Madam Mitch, your mumu go kill you. Now the owner of the school, you they send message. So. What concerns me with owner of school? If you take your business casually, if you are too big for your business, your business will be less than you. Tomorrow, I'm going to teach you about breaking financial limitations. So, it was when Mary finished pushing out her dream that the angel went to announce. It was then that wise men came. It was then that gifts came. People will, I saw you guys singing, I saw talent. You know, Easy T, I used to preach to Easy T when, it was, when they were in the university. So last year, he invited me to speak to Messi Chinwo, GUC, um, UDK, and Akil, Messi, Akele, or whatever. I knew him when he was at Absu, when I was going for Eagles Conference. I preached the first message in Eagles Conference, Dr. Paul the Beloved. Nobody will celebrate you now. You know why? God does not like uh, graffiti on you. Every currency has few signatures. When there are too many signatures in your life that they contributed to why you are who you are, you become a graffiti like that man that writes in Rumokoro, graffiti. You will be loyal to men instead of being loyal to God. When no man makes you, then you can stand up and look at man and speak to man and not be afraid. So, the journey from Moab to Bethlehem takes seven days of climbing hills and valleys and cold and the possibility of bandits. If any person preaches a Christianity that is easy for you, he is a liar. There is no Christianity that is easy. Salvation is free, but success has a cost and a price. Before you can eat rice, you must pay a price. To plant rice takes about 13 steps in Ohozara and Abakiliki. So don't you, you the, all this Yahoo Yahoo generation, listen, Yahoo Yahoo generation, a lot of them will die prematurely, even if they be you, no swear for them. They will die naturally from accident, from insanity, from drug abuse, from assassination, for collecting and not remitting. Then a lot of them are going to go mad. Because taking a loud, taking rofinol, taking umpurumiri, and all that, they will go mad. And a lot of you slay queens running after them, your breast will disappear. There is no easy way to greatness in the whole world. Okay. So, when they got to Bethlehem, the whole town was, was in confusion. Could this be Naomi? She said, don't call me Naomi, call me Mara. But listen very carefully. Listen very carefully. Don't let any man who has packed his destiny by the express way of life or whose destiny has been accidented be the person that will prevent you from... From pursuing your destiny. Many people say, Umehia Gomegbera. Umehia Gomegbera. If you know one Wakari, come out, make I pass. That's the way life is. If your father is not ready to progress, live and progress. Life will ask you questions in future. Ten years from now, you're going to be, where are you now? How are you? Are you? What of your children? How are you now? We used to, you know, we used to remember our songs. We are getting bigger, getting bigger, getting bigger. If you are getting smaller, getting smaller, getting smaller. Life will ask you questions. Ten friends will not remain friends for ten years. Progress will separate them. I'm talking from experience. 
My wife's classmate just saw my wife. Just called, just met her. Feli Feli, eh, how are you? Say, fine. But then my wife asked, where are you? Say, we are in Abuja. She, my wife's classmate. Say, we are in Abuja, but we are also in the diaspora. Then I asked my wife, what of Kelechi? My wife doesn't know how to pose. Me, I know how to pull. <laughs> so, I said, Kelechi, oh, Kelechi is practicing medicine in Germany. I said, you are, you are another, oh, I said, there's Chidima. She's just finishing her master's. Is there any other one? I said, there's a, there's a third one. Yeah, let's spit for him face. There's a, a third one. <laughs> so, there is, a, there is a, a third one. Now one became a millionaire in my house at 23. And, um, it's in Europe. He just came from U.S. where he went to work in Boston. They can't ask me. Any other one? Yes, there's a fourth one. <laughs> so that one is doing masters in Europe too. Listen, life is like table tennis. If you serve testimony, come with me. I must return with testimony. If the ball drops for your court, you get fault. your denomination limit you when you face you want to be in the nations. Church of God mission, I'm Church of God mission. No. I'm a global citizen. All of us can be here and you will influence your world. I will tell you that in the next season. You see, and, and they got to Bethlehem in, during the barley harvest. Listen, in any generation, there is a harvest that is going on. If you want to break social barriers, plug into it. The harvest of this generation is the internet. It's social media. The most powerful weapon in the world today is, a, is an Android phone with internet connectivity. They are watching us beyond these four walls. So with internet, we are limitless. I came down from a hotel in Port Harcourt here to enter Uber. The Uber driver knew me from internet. I came down from Patron Hotel to the, to the reception. The reception is new me. As we are coming from the hotel this evening, as I just walked out, somebody just saw me, Baba, 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 knelt down and dipped his hands inside pocket and brought money and gave to me. I don't know him, but he knows me. A young boy just did dancing in the rain during the lockdown. And they saw it in the United States and invited him and gave him a scholarship. A young boy produced a drone. Nigeria didn't care about him, but Holland has employed him. I make more millions from my phone. I don't run a church because I don't have that energy. All those people that give you more problems in church are the ones who don't pay better tithes. I prayed for one woman, she got pregnant. Now me go pay hospital bill. <laughs> I can't. A poor man does not do philanthropy. <laughs> you don't solve a problem at the level of the, at which it is created. I say no. And those church people I was pastor, I know like these lively ones. Very wicked people. You know, Gogoro crosses the placental barrier. There's something in medicine called fetal alcohol syndrome. We in the Urobo, if you like, go tell them what I talk about. <laughs> we from the Urobo environment, we drink Ogogoro. And so when the mother drinks Ogogoro, the Ogogoro crosses the placental barrier. Unlike other amino acid, fatty acid, Ogogoro just diffuses through, goes into the baby. So the baby is shocked inside the womb. So that's why worry people, those of us from worry, are not too normal. You see, you see that I'm not normal, is it? I'm not preaching like a normal pastor. So, <laughs> let's move on. So, Naomi, let's go to the next verse, chapter 2, verse 1. 
Naomi had a relative on her husband's side, a man of standing from the clan of Elimelech, whose name was Boaz. Look up, please. Let me conclude what I was saying before I left. I write a blog. That blog is read by in 103 countries and territories of the world. 103 territories and countries of the world. I will just write it three minutes video post. Three minutes writing post. From 103 nations of the world that I have never been to. So I'm limitless. Listen, there are three worlds now. There is the physical world, there is the spiritual world, and there is the virtual world. Just imagine what I'm saying now. On Saturday evening, by, on Sunday morning, by 1.30 a.m., make a post. Somebody will respond to you. That means there are, there are a whole lot of people who are awake at night. So, there was the barley harvest. And Ruth, in chapter 2, said, let's go to chapter 2, verse 1. The Bible says, Now Naomi had a relative on her husband's side, a man of standing from the clan of Elimelech, whose name was Boaz. And Ruth the Moabite said to Naomi, Let me go to the fields and pick up the leftover grain behind anyone in whose eyes I find favor. Naomi said to her, Go ahead, my daughter. So she went out, entered a field, and began to glean behind the harvesters. As it turned out, she was walking in a field belonging to Boaz, who was from the clan of Elimelech. Verse 4. Just then, Boaz arrived from Bethlehem and greeted the harvesters. The Lord be with you. Look up. Number one, my helper, oh my. You don't come across them anyhow. You deliberately, intentionally pray to meet helpers. When I wanted to start this series of lectures, I didn't start ministry with this kind. I said that ministry would fall. But they will fall, they get up, they are the same people. One day I was doing Holy Ghost baptism in Agbo. Me that carried the anointing. The anointing has not started moving me. One boy was already doing like this. Now I go meet her. I said, if you fall, I slap you now. You know fall. You want to deceive me? You want to make me feel that I'm a man of God when me I never feel that I'm a man of God? <laughs> so I went into this developmental Christianity. But I don't run a church. Even my denomination did not recognize me. And I prayed, God, I wrote down the places I wanted to be. And I wrote the names of people I wanted to help me move. I wrote Chidi Okorafo. I wrote several names. Several names. Fortunately for me, so you must have a desire. Strong, intense desire. An anger against the status quo. An anger against limitation. If you are living in one room, you will think you have property until you pack into a flat. What you tolerate, you will celebrate. And anger. I was angry against being a village pastor. And so I prayed. And there was a message that was preached in Assemblies of God Divinity School. It was titled, From Grass to Grace. The man that preached that message has never lived in the grassy area before. He has never been poor. So he didn't preach it well. I said, God, if I could preach this message, I would preach it better than this. It took three years, and I will explain that to you. It took three years for Chidi Okorafo to be made district superintendent of Jerusalem district in Umaya to invite me to the same place to preach the same message I desired because I'm in line with the pop. I'm not, I'm, I'm not preaching because of popularity. I'm not the kind of guest preacher people like to invite because I say hard truths. And invite them to preach from grace to grass. That day, God is a divine synchronizer. Divine harmonizer. God knew, designed the internet before man knew it. 
God can hack websites. www.pharaohsdaughter forward slash go and bath in the water side. Immediately Moses' mother said, this child is a proper child, will not die here. Will not die like other children. And she built an ark without the permission of a stupid husband. Sometimes Christian husbands can be stupid. I'm waiting to hear from the Lord. You will hear from the Lord before you give me belly. Monk, monkey. Why do you look your wife now? <laughs> you know, pastors can be lazy and sluggish. Please don't push me. I have not heard from the Lord. She started building the ark without the husband's consent. And immediately she put the basket in the river. I've been to the source of the river Nile in Jinja. The Nile crocodile stores the children in the mouth. Because the male crocodile eats his own children. When they put Moses in the basket, God sent half the websites of the crocodiles in the river Nile. And they went on fasting and praying. God is going to hack somebody's website because of you. He will tell you, I don't know why I'm doing this thing, but something is pushing me. Why will Pharaoh's daughter go and bath in Borokiri River? In Egypt, they had jacuzzis. They had bathtubs. They had swimming pools. Why did she go and bath? www forward slash Pharaoh's daughter slash go and bath in the water side. And God spoke to the fish. God spoke digital language. God spoke to the lions. He spoke digital language. When your purpose is boiling inside you, write it down. What you want, God will hack somebody's website for your sake. And so, I finished preaching. That day, you know, before now, when they want to preach, Barista Zuka will be an other anointed man of God. Now we be the other anointed. <laughs> no identity. <laughs> Just, you know, when your father is rich and he dies and he has many children, we regret, we are called to glory, we announce the death of Chief Green, survived by many children, amongst our professor, this doctor, this, and many others, too numerous to mention. All those two numerous to mention are the limited ones. No identity. They are the Popo Gary of the family. <laughs> and so, I finished preaching and I went outside. I met Barista Zukabi. I preached before Barista Zukabi that day. By divine synchronization and arrangement. He said, Dr. Ch uh, Brother Charles, that was a good message. Can you preach that message around Nigeria? I said, yes. He said, the Assemblies of God has mandated me to go around Nigeria to teach on wealth creation. And I was teaching from my experience of poverty, living poverty to wealth. And I said, I will. Then I got a letter from the General Council of Assemblies of God Church. I had not preached in our men's convention, even district uh, in Ugeli. But now I'm going to Assemblies of God men, not district, around Nigeria. And I got a letter. Somebody say inspiration. inspiration. Naomi's Ruth said, let me go out to the field in, whom, in whose field I will find favor. Be specific when you are praying about your destiny. Don't tell me any husband. No, any husband is not a husband. Specify your husband. Specify the kind of wife you want to marry. So that when he comes, you will know. That's why church good girls don't marry. They are waiting for any husband. And since the last time God gave wife to Abraham, he no longer contracts marriages. But they said, the wife that God gave to me. It's okay. I'm Adam. So yeah, I'm only not the married. So, she had an inspiration. When poverty and hardship does not pain you, you are dead. When you no longer feel insult, you are dead. Because poverty can be anesthetic. You will live near gutter, you know they feel the smell. And she got up. According to her word, she went into the farm of Boaz. 
inspiration. And at that time, God hacked Boaz's website. And Boaz came. Listen, one of the things you must pray for in life is divine noticeability. All of us can be singing, let me be the one that somebody will notice. All of us can be playing football, let me be the one that a foreign coach will listen. It entered. When you see most successful people, there's nothing special about them. It just shows that there was a divine noticeability. Somebody, breakthrough is not when you pass through a wall. Breakthrough is when somebody who has reached where you want to be gets in contact with you and is willing to take you along. And listen, somebody is watching you. Some of your Facebook pages will prevent you from getting married. Those of you on TikTok, people will go and check what you have posted. Some of your Facebook pages will prevent you from getting visa in an embassy. They will go and check your Facebook page. It will prevent you from getting a job. They will go and check. They will browse you about you. I was to go and do an interview with Mrs. Ayori Shejafo with one banker. They went and browsed him. He was, he was sacked from the bank because of fraud. So only me went. I don't, I've been married for 37 years. I've been, I get tempted. One woman in South Africa, when I finished preaching because I'm funny, an anointing moved, she carried two nuclear reactors on her chest. Use it to knock my chest. It beat him. No man of God. And while I'm for three days, my chest was hot. <laughs> I still get tempted, but for 37 years, I've never kissed another woman or told another woman I love you. Are you following what I'm saying? Somebody's watching you. And when Ruth entered the farm and Boaz entered, Boaz, when they said, whose maiden is this noticeability? He said, she has been here since morning. Somebody started speaking on her behalf. Recommendation. Somebody said, she has been here since morning, walking throughout the day without resting until now. Listen and listen well. Africans think that prayer will make them grow. No. God gave them according to their abilities. So it is the capacity you develop that will determine how much you will receive from God. So if you develop limitless capacities, imagine I'm a medical doctor, I'm a social scientist, I'm a farmer, I am an author, I'm a school proprietor, I give business lectures. You know how much they pay me for each, this, this kind of lecture? It's a quarter of a million at least. And I specify the hotel. I develop the capacity. So what do you have that God can use that somebody can invest in? Develop it all. Let me, I don't know whether I have time. Let me, I will see. Five minutes, okay. Listen. The wife that Isaac married, Isaac married capacity and competence. He said, the girl that will drink the water, I will tell, give me water to drink. And I will say, I will water your camels too. A camel drinks 30 gallons of water, 120 liters. 10 camels, 1,200 liters. Divide by 20 liter jerry cans, 60, 20 liter jerry cans. 1,200 times 10 acceleration due to gravity times the distance to the well, plus the depth of the well, times 1,200, times acceleration due to gravity, plus multiply it by the coefficient of inclination to the well, determine the energy the girl spent to marry Isaac. What do you have that a man needs to marry? If now you, if a fellow, to fetch 60 jerry cans of water, what kind of nonsense is this? I don't even know you. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody? Number three, character. Number four, chemistry.
ministry. Some people will enter anywhere. They will quarrel with every person. People will antagonize you. Four things and I'm done. She had good communication skills. Who am I, a stranger, that you notice me? She was appealing to the sense of his Jewishness that you should not oppress a stranger. And then the man called him to come and eat. He said, I've heard of your reputation. How you took care of my, sis, my, 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 my auntie. This, 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 this. Told her to eat. Told them to give her water to drink. Gave her extra food. Told them to deliberately look, limitation of gleaning from the book of Deuteronomy chapter uh, 9 or so is limited to harvesting what they left behind. But she was limitless. They were deliberately dropping some for her to pick because of character, competence, and chemistry. Then she had social intelligence. If they, if they invite you to a church, an older minister invites you to a church, don't go and display anointing. He won't call you again. When you finish preaching, give him the microphone to pray so that when the miracles happen, if the church members are sharing testimonies, when daddy prayed, when they follow, if he gives you an opportunity to preach here, don't say, I will show daddy today that I have anointing too. Anointing only move that day. You don't experience that now. Ruth said, who am I, a stranger, that is not up to one of your servants that you notice me? If to say she just come. When your auntie came to my place in Moab, we were the one feeding her. No, nah, and nah, I just came here. I'm suffering with you people. Let's get go see. <laughs> but she brought herself low so that she will not be noticed. Am I talking to somebody? Finally, to break social barriers, you need a mentor. Mentor. Naomi said, is it not time for me to find a husband for you? A mentor will have you in his memory. A mentor will give you methods. As you are going, wait until he is drunk and he has eaten. Go and lie under his feet. Don't let any person see you. Now they follow me. Listen, if now put out babe, if I feel, sir, this wristwatch is functioning by precision. The keyboard is functioning by precision. If this microphone is not tuned to precision, it won't work. Listen, the highest level of human thought and endeavor that is limitless is precision thinking. If it was a potacot or worry girl, she will have failed. Don't let any person see you. You know, go even wait until Boaz don't shack small. I don't show. I don't show. I got book book boa boa. I don't show. Now where you want to sleep? Tell me, make I know. Lie at his feet. Worry girl go say if he lie on top of her, it might go quick pass. Or go lie. Or go lie on top of her. Uh, so this is what you have been doing in this town without my knowledge. Cancelled. He said, do not let any person meet you here. Some of you are idiots. We know the quick week. But as you shark anything, you make a shark small now. They go down break. You see, they change gear. You need to suffocate for your sleep. Mumu. They go come break. <laughs> Precision thinking. I pray for you that the words you have heard, you will go back and think over them, meditate upon them, and may you break social barriers. God bless you. I remain your friend, Dr. Charles. Uh, Let's celebrate God's servant. Please be on your feet. Be on your feet as you celebrate God's servant. Please celebrate him. Celebrate him. Celebrate him. Celebrate him. Celebrate him. Whoa! This was a bump. Father, we give you praise. Can you begin to appreciate God?
appreciate God, appreciate God, appreciate God. He's done great things. What a mighty God we serve. Appreciate Him. We give you praise. Oh, 